But first, back to Capitol Hill and an interesting interview. Kamala Harris and Joe Biden uh, yesterday out. Uh, it, it looked like they were campaigning yesterday. Joe Biden in Wisconsin. He's going to be in the state of Florida today. Kamala Harris yesterday um, was asked about why the president didn't mention China more during his State of the Union, and she gave a long, uh, now signature Kamala Harris rambling response. Take a listen. You know, the president met with uh, Xi Jinping in, in Bali, and then actually weeks later I had a brief um, meeting with him in Bangkok. We have been very clear uh, with directly with the Chinese leaders and with our own um, allies and partners around the world. We invite competition with China, but we do not seek conflict. We do not seek confrontation. We've been clear about policy as it, term as it relates to China. First of all, when there's a violation of a our sovereignty, such as the president described last night, took the balloon down. Done. Hey, for more on that, let's welcome in commentary editor for The Washington Times, Kelly Sadler, Project 21 National Advisory Board member, radio host Christopher Arps, and former deputy press secretary at the White House, Hogan Gidley. Uh, great to have you all back. Hogan, um, is she not being briefed, or is the White House just that scared of condemning the actions of the CCP? They may not be seeking conflict with China, but it's here. And they're doing all types of things to try and subvert our national security. This balloon is just one of the latest methods. You played a clip earlier of Joe Biden saying, hey, they told me not to talk about it because it could jeopardize the investigation. No, you're the president. What you should be saying is I may not need to comment on this because we're looking at it and we're going to hold China accountable. But they're not going to hold China accountable. You heard infinitesimal mentions of China in the uh, State of the Union address, instead focusing on baggage fees and other hidden fees at resorts and things like that. China's coming after us, so is Russia. Global threats are here attacking the United States of America. And quite frankly, Joe Biden can't get his act together. China doesn't feel like they're, uh, ha they have any pressure on them whatsoever. Donald Trump put pressure on China, made them pay as far as tariffs are concerned. Joe Biden is weak. He is feckless. Not just the people in this country who see it, it's the rest of the world as well, and it puts us in a really dangerous situation. Yeah, MSNBC characterized the State of the Union as a victory for the administration, Kelly, and yesterday was a victory lap which started in Wisconsin as they kick off their 2024 campaign. Kamala Harris was asked yesterday about Joe Biden's age. He's 80 years old and running again in 2024. Just turned 80. Uh, looks like he's gearing up for re-election, but a majority of Americans, according a majority of Democrats, according to our new poll, say they don't want President Biden to run again. What do you say to them? I mean, George, I, I think that age is more than a chronological fact, to be very frank with you. It's about um, thinking about uh, whether we have in our leader, which we do in Joe Biden, somebody who is bold. I mean, think about it. I have never heard age described like that in my entire life, Kelly. It's more than just a chronological <laughs> fact. Um, here's the thing. That's George Stephanopoulos. Steffi Steffi worked for Bill Clinton. All right, he's, he's going to be friendly to the administration. These questions aren't going to stop, Kelly, over the next no. two years. It's only February 2023. Yeah, no, they're not going to stop. And you know what else? It's not going to stop the questions about Joe Biden and China and whether he's compromised or not. And his son, Hunter Biden's business deal. Deals. I mean, when you looked at the Twitter files yesterday, there was two stories in that. One is the censor, censorship and free speech. The other one is what is Hunter Biden's affiliation with China and what is the 10 percent to the big guy and why don't journalists want to investigate this? Why did a spy balloon, why was a spy balloon allowed to enter our airspace, cross the entire continental U.S., and then was only shot down after it got gathered all the information it needed? Why did Joe Biden not brief the public on this as it was happening? Why didn't he say anything about China in his State of the Union address? Why didn't he just briefly mention it for a couple sentences? There are things that are going to haunt this president going into 2024, and hopefully House Republicans can get to the bottom of all of this uh, with their investigation. Well, and you never want to hear the, the Neville Chamberlain comparisons, okay? Uh, the, the appeasement comparisons, the weak comparisons. You want to hear Ronald Reagan comparisons, Chris. Yeah. Peace through strength. That's just not happening. Um, and by the way, Kelly brought up the Twitter thing. So Montana Senator Steve Daines, um, apparently a big hunter. The guy's from the state of Montana. Uh, so the same day that we're having these, these Twitter su suppression, suspension hearings on Capitol Hill, Chris, uh, Steve Daines, uh, he had his Twitter account suspended 
um, for more than a day because he he tweeted out a picture of he and his wife. Uh, it was a hunting photo. Now his his account has been restored, um, but you know he he said, "Hey, my wife's a great shot." If you look at this picture, it's not offensive. It's just he and his wife were out hunting. There's the picture. This is just he and his wife out hunting. So Elon Musk, look, I get that he's a champion for free speech. He hasn't said anything about the Newsmax DirecTV situation, by the way, which I think is a miss for Elon Musk. But he's also still allowing this to happen because of photos like that, Chris. Yeah, and that surprises me because when this story came out, Elon Musk tweeted out that he was going to look into this and take care of the situation. You know, getting back to that Chinese spy balloon for just a second, you know, we don't know exactly why that spy balloon was going across the country, exactly what it was doing, what kind of spying it was doing. You know, I read a article from 2017 from the South China Post that said that China was uh, developing these balloons and, and testing them in 2017, right. and these balloons were capable of releasing bat-sized drones uh, to fly away from the balloon to get even more surveillance. So we don't know. There could be tiny drones that are flying around our country, and we have no idea that because the president was afraid to confront China. And we saw with Russia how he's conf he's afraid to confront Russia. Uh, he keeps saying we don't want to send these uh, these uh, hardware over there in yeah, Ukraine yeah. because it may infuriate Putin. So point taken. Good point, uh, Chris. Um, I, I we don't. There's been no reporting to indicate that there are bat-sized drones flying around. Um, we had you know spy planes monitoring this thing. I think we know exactly what this balloon, what the purpose of this balloon was. Looks like a duck, quacks like a duck. <laughs> Most likely it's a, it's a duck. Uh, and this balloon was spying on, Spy on our, 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 you know, the, the estimate is 21 military installations that it flew within 100 miles of. 21 of our most sensitive military installations, which are all located, by the way, for a reason in the center of our country, Chris, not far from where you are in the Midwest there in the yes. state of Missouri. Kelly, Politico was some reporting, and this was the other narrative yesterday during Joe Biden's, the first leg of his, uh, his victory lap in Wisconsin. Politico reporting, Republicans turned themselves into prop, props for Joe Biden on Tuesday night. Uh, at last, in 2023, came a new twist in an old ritual. This time, it was ordinary Republicans putting the spotlight on him themselves through extraordinary rudeness, boos, taunts, groans. The opposition party effectively turned themselves into primetime pops for President Joe Biden. Do you agree with that assessment? Absolutely not. And I think this could work out to Republicans' advantage. Now, listen, McCarthy was clear going into the State of the Union, and he was clear with the President of the United States that Republicans are not going to cut Medicare and Social Security. And he even did a, a pre-address to the president's uh, State of the Union saying as much. So when the president wanted to take, you know, basically jab Republicans and put out the public narrative, which is untrue, that Republicans are coming for your Medicare and for your Social Security, Republicans needed to stand up and say that that's not true. And you know what? The back and forth, they came to a compromise. And so President Biden is on the record saying, well, I guess we can agree that's off the table. I think that I think that comment from the president will be run in multitude of ads in 2024 whenever Democrats want to use this uh, to bring down Republicans. OK, 30 seconds. Chris, uh, got to throw this out there just because we were talking about it earlier. The Hill um, running a poll about who the most popular Democrats are for 2024 if, if Joe Biden decides not to run. Number one, Kamala Harris, 32 percent. Number two was Hillary Clinton. Are we going to do Could she be the nominee again, Hillary Clinton, in 2024? Could it be Trump Hillary rematch, not Trump Biden? I don't think so. Hillary couldn't make it in 2016, so I don't see her making it in uh, in 2022. I think that ship has sailed. Okay, good points. Um, great having you on this morning. Chris Arps, Kelly Sadler, thank you.